Hey. 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 Oh, okay, double clutch. Hey. Uh, it's episode 30. Wow. Yeah. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. There's we analyze 30. them. There's 30 of them. There's, there's 30. We did this 29 times yeah. and then said to ourselves, yes, we should do it again. Absolutely, we did. Yeah. And now here's what's funny about it, too, because I was I was looking at this like 30 damn episodes. And then I was thinking about the song I'll bring up later. And I'm like, well, surely we've done this song because we've done 30 episodes and the song must have come up. Nope. Huh. Oh, there's still a lot of ground to cover. 30 songs is uh, three albums, probably, approximately. Yeah. He's got 10 or 11 studio albums, maybe more, 12. Yeah. Yeah. And we've, I think we've wisely not immediately hit on just doing all the hits right away. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I quibble with wisely, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd say intentionally. Yeah, intentionally. That's the Yeah, way. yeah. Uh, they, we do uh, the songs that are interesting in the moment. Yeah. Um, now we had homework. Do you remember our homework? Yes. <laughs> I don't remember our homework. So we were, you mentioned the song will kind of get you in the feels a little bit. Yeah. And then I was thinking that our homework this week would be we would yeah. come up with examples of songs, and they don't have to be Billy Joel songs. And for me, they ain't. Uh, but songs that will on the regular make you cry when you listen to them. I have a couple in pocket. All right, cool. You want to go first? Oh, yeah. We're going to start there? Yeah. All right. I mean, I don't know how helpful this is. I can't sing it. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, um, there's a Loudon Wainwright song called Thanksgiving. Okay. That uh, will kill you every time. Oh, I bet a lot of his songs do that to you, right? Very much. It's about going home to see your family for Thanksgiving uh, as an adult. Yeah. And how miserable it is and all the things that are miserable about it. And it's very, it's like a spooky song. He sings it sort of spooky. Uh, and the very last verse is a flashback to Thanksgiving when you were a kid. And uh, what was the line? Nothing bad has happened yet. Oh. Forget it. Yeah. It's over. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to cry right now? Oh, I'll always be ready to cry. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's not an achievement on anybody's part. <laughs> you know what's funny, though, is that song might not make me cry because I don't have fond memories of Thanksgiving in any sense. But do you have any fond memories, and the answer might be no, of when nothing bad had happened yet? I don't, well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. so I, I can very clearly remember thinking like, oh, our family uh, is better. We did good. Nothing bad's going on here. Oh, okay. And then like many reveals later, yeah. feeling differently about that. Yeah. Um, oh, man, I just thought of another one, another crier for, for similar reasons. But um, yeah, that's funny. I guess. So I do remember really liking my father and mother. I remember that. And I remember it changing drastically. And I, I, it, for the many years, I couldn't put my finger on what had gone wrong. Why, like with my father, there was a gulf between us because that happens between a boy and his father, first of all, anyway. Yes. And there definitely was a moment when I was no longer his cute son. I was an annoying teenager. Uh-huh. And he wasn't equipped to deal with it. And uh, I remember that. And I remember with my mother, it was when she moved and didn't tell me and I was homeless. That was the bad moment when we went south. <laughs> but then we made up later, so that was fine. Um, I had a fine relationship with my mother later because it turns out everything made sense as to why she moved away. <laughs> but it was weird. I've told you that story, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah, because again, you're, uh, you're listening to Alex and Jim analyze Jim. 
<laughs> yeah, one of my earliest memories is my dad being in charge of taking care of me. And I do vividly remember this as I was a baby and we had a set of barbells and my dad just wasn't watching me. So I was playing with the barbells. I dropped one on my foot and it opened up like a flower. <laughs> and I can vividly picture the toe. And then I can picture my mother screaming like a maniac at my dad, justifiably so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As I got stitches. Oh, man. So eh, maybe that's a good memory. Eh, let's call that one a good memory. You were all together. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, so here's one for me and my mother, uh, the circle. The circle. I was standing by my window. At a on a cold and lonely day, when I saw the hearse arriving for to carry my mother away, yep. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by yep. and by? We're losing him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know the song, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that'll make me cry. If I think too much about my mom. Sure, but that's almost intentional. So that's a little bit of a cheat. Is if I'm in a very specific mood regarding my mom and I want to feel things for her and right for her nicely I can play that song and go yeah she's an okay lady and I certainly too bad she's gone yeah isn't it nice how you can sort of uh custom make your emotional state yeah absolutely <laughs> with music yeah I used to say that that is proof that emotions are fake <laughs> that, they can, that you can self-manipulate like you can't tickle yourself but you can make yourself uh, feel happier. Do you know why you can't tickle yourself, by the way? No. Because you are not a threat to yourself. The tickle mechanism is something- well, that... I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, oh, yeah, fair, fair. Uh, the tickle <laughs> mechanism is something that we developed to protect these soft areas where other primates could really F us up or other animals. Yeah, that makes sense. That's I why, that. huh? I did not know that. That's great. That's why if you remember being tickled as a kid, sometimes it you, you, you're laughing. So whoever the tickler was thinks they're, oh, they're having fun. But do you remember how horrible it actually was? Yes. That's why. Yeah, nightmare. Yeah. Then you would pee on yourself to scare off the predators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably true. At least the skies go, oh, this meat's no good. It smells like pee. Yep. <laughs> uh, science. <laughs> All right, so what's your other crying song? Oh, gosh. What is the David Wilcox song? These are very obscure songs. It's great. That I'm coming up with. Um, that Chet Baker's, Chet Baker's Swan Song, I think it's called. Okay, I've not heard that. It is about the uh, suicide of Chet Baker. Okay. Um, and it has a lot of very mournful uh, trumpet. I haven't listened to it in so long for that reason, I think. It's yeah. like, oh no, my emotional state. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you go into, a, <coughs> excuse me, into the David Wilcox library, there's a lot of good weepies. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. And also a lot of like eye rollers. <laughs> He's going for the weepy a lot with, uh, I'd say, 40% success. Oh, uh, yeah. Percent, like, oh, boy, this guy. Yeah. Okay, look, it's <coughs> Ofti McGee over here, yeah. Um, the other one, uh, well, here's one that didn't used to make me cry, although I always recognized it as sad. But then as I've gotten older and I can relate to it more as just because I'm not a youngie anymore. Uh, bring him home from Le Mis. Oh yeah, kicks my ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, last year, particularly because a, a fellow I knew who was eighteen passed away. Oh boy. And then uh, and and I had been uh, helping him as best I could, but you know he was um, he had his demons, and his demons won, unfortunately as they do sometimes yeah so now that song oh my god it was bad before but now that song will just yeah plus it's just oh it's a good play so yeah yeah i mean if you want to go into musical theater 
you can get pretty weepy. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, and then here's one that's weird. And then you give me another one. I hopefully you have another. I'm sure you have another. One fine day, that that pop song. One fine day. Well, oh yeah. It's a fun song. Every now and then I think about the lyrics and I'll accidentally make myself cry. <laughs> <laughs> Because I just think it's sad that she's waiting around for this lump. Because <laughs> she shouldn't be waiting for him to come around. And it makes me sad for her. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Like third party empathy weeping. Yeah. And, yep. and granted, that was written by a studio writer or whatever. But when I'm thinking about the character in the song, I'm like, ah, that sucks. <laughs> you don't need to wait for this idiot. Because she's like, he's running around, which he's having sex with a bunch of people. He's doing all kinds of stuff. And she's, but one of these days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think we can all <laughs> identify. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're not crying for her. You're crying for you, baby. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what gets me? <laughs> Sometimes it's a really dumb one, but uh, Ben. Yeah, that's not dumb. That's very pretty. Yeah. It's very pretty. And it's also like uh, such a pure little song. Yeah. And it is like that thing, like he, you know, he recorded it before the bad things started I, to happen. <laughs> I was going to say, it's, he's still little michael jackson and it's like sweet and dumb little yeah. song and wasn't it from the rat movie ben yes because it is about a rat yeah <laughs> it's about a rat which is weirdly sweet it's yeah it's a very sweet because it, because it's very it's a child but it's like the circumstances of him recording that i always think like oh exciting probably like first song for a movie yeah. Young performer singing this sweet little love song yeah. with a very clean voice. Yeah, and no, yeah, in nailing it, absolutely nailing it. For nailing it. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two of them that make me quite cry uh, over Mary Jo in nice ways. Uh, there would be for an ever, forever and ever, amen, Randy Travis. <laughs> sure. And then, uh, then you can tell me goodbye by the casinos. Oh. Oh, I don't know. Kiss me each morning for a okay. million years. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's, uh, speaking of Randy Travis, there's a song called Promises, which I don't know if you know, but that's borderline. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a weepy, but then you also don't really feel bad for the character. Cause you're like, well, you cheated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but clearly you're very upset. And that's a good story to tell too, Randy and Travis. That's that fucking voice. Yeah, told some good stories because that's a good story to tell anyway. As the guy you don't necessarily shouldn't sympathize with, but at the same time you, yeah, you know, that's. Oh, I do empathize with the emotion. Yeah, it's like I have trouble sometimes watching. I used to watch Pops a lot, and um, I had to stop because I always felt so bad for the person getting arrested. And then after I got arrested, it, it was unwatchable. Yeah. It's like, oh, I know how that feels when you uh, you think, uh, oh, it's just a traffic ticket. Oh, no, can we look in your glove box? I'm like, oh, no, that moment. <laughs> Ugh. Gutting. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. because you, you remember that the person on cops, as hilarious as they are without their shirt on or whatever it is, is like, Man, a lot of things have gone wrong for you today, sir. Yes, I think this is just bravado. Yeah. You are actually quite broken inside. Yeah. And yeah, they, that's and, no shirt money. <laughs> and the cops probably aren't going to solve your issue because they're not trained to do that. Yeah, and they don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> that's not why they came. Let's go help this fellow. <laughs> nope. Oh. Let's see. I, I think uh, that's all the ones I came up with, but there's, of course, there's a ton. There's those, a ton. Those are the main ones. Um, yeah, I'll cry a lot anyway. 
because it just feels good. <laughs> I, uh, one time my wife came home and I'm watching television and I'm crying like blood, just crying so hard. And my wife goes, what are you watching? And I go, Futurama. <laughs> What? And oh, it's no. a thing, by the way. There's an episode of Futurama called Jurassic Bark. Uh -huh. And it's all about the dog he had in the 20th century that he tries to bring back to modern time. And it is, <laughs> if I'm not careful, I'll cry now because it's all the whole thing is about when you boil the whole story down. Is how faithful a dog is. That's what this. Yeah. Is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they fucking trick you into thinking it's a comedy. <laughs> so they sneak around your defenses because you're right. laughing at the funniness. Right. Oh, and, and, they just cut your knees out. Yep. They fucking fool you, man. <laughs> oh, any good comedy that does that, they'll. I'll be. I'm a sucker for that. I am a sucker for a good comedy that does it correctly if it's just the like oh i realize i love you ah no but not that but if it's that dumb thing but if it's any number of things that i'm like oh i didn't expect a a, a real thing <laughs> aren't we just making jokes come on oh yeah and i mean a dog is an unfair weapon <laughs> yeah but i feel like there was a string of movies and stuff like disney live action stuff when we were the right age for it i mean obviously there was old yeller but i think there was other stuff about oh yeah dogs going on adventures and stuff the dogs whole benji. And cats were friends yeah come on the whole benji <laughs> series the whole yeah. benji series and then years later i got a dog and it didn't dawn on me till later i'm like oh i got a benji and i probably did my brain was like i need a benji <laughs> it was a cute cutest little you know just a moppy little rat but oh lord That's i wonder what he's up to these days what's that <laughs> oh, still on that farm upstate <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah all those uh dogs end up living just outside of new york right <laughs> yeah yeah That's you can't find a place in the summer they're all all full of dogs all full of dogs that are still happy <laughs> still happy 40 and 50 year old dogs <laughs> oh my god until the night uh pretty old, pretty old <laughs> really, really good segue first of oh, all yeah. oh yeah I, th I think we wound it down pretty good yeah I, yeah i wanted to say this before i forget it what a great saxophone towards the end right fantastic uh yeah. great like uh, summer night fire escape sax solo. Yeah, prominent, not background either. No, it was, he turned over the song. Yeah, like, well, I've run out of words. You go, you go for a while. Um, it jumps out at me because of that. Because most of the time, I don't, unless it's the 50s, I don't, there's not a lot of sax that does that. There's a lot of saxophone in the 60s, but it's usually, uh, background something yeah or there's a little solo right in the middle and then back to business yeah so this I is guess, like take us out and i guess it's because billy joel at his heart really is a musician so he's not just doing he's not just doing pop songs i mean he is but but when he puts them together he likes other musicians yeah likes to try to do something different so that felt different to me yeah, this album, it's his 52nd Street, right? Yep. Yeah, it was a lot of, like, certainly there were the hits. It really felt divided between, like, here are your hits for the studio. Yeah. And here is a bunch of Spanish jazz stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, he had, went on a jag listening to a bunch of it or, like, took a trip to Cuba or something. <laughs> like, it was like, I'm going to do, like, Rosalinda's Eyes and Until the Night. Yeah. What else is in there? There's another one. Stiletto kind of has some of that. Yeah. Um, but it's all very like, and I think he does the accent a little bit in some songs. <laughs> Not this one, thankfully. I was almost going to pick Stiletto, by the way. I didn't, but I was, oh. almost, I was on the on a, uh, pick something else. But, um, oh, that's funny. Yeah. Fire, 
Clarence Clemens never played that much. That's <laughs> true. And he's Clarence Clemens. Yeah, and this is Richie Canada, who is the will be the topic of my trivia question um, when we oh, get I, there. Oh, Rich, Richie Canada will be the topic. Richie Canada, oh. yes, yes, indeed. Oh. Um, but I like this one because it doesn't fit the mold we often end up talking about, which is like, oh, it's uh, Billy Joel snarking away about how he's cool and everybody else is kind of dumb. Yeah. The one's just like pretty romantic. It is, yeah. Which I get fits our our topic, which is nice that we talked about sad little romantic songs and yeah, yeah. It doesn't quite. Uh, the song wouldn't make you cry, but you could see where the people in it might be <laughs> weepy. Uh, yeah, it, it feels like it's just a pure song about a romantic. It feels like summer. I don't know. Does he mention summer or does it just feel that way? Um, because it's summer. Yeah. <laughs> Currently. <laughs> Is summer is it hot like a bear there yet? Yeah, it's incredibly hot and gross. Yeah, um, it was like ninety and ninety percent today. Um, but yeah, it does feel like sticky New York music. Yeah. Um, but it does feel like yeah, it's just a a love song. And I think the only thing in question, I was talking to Sue about it, is like, um, is this just a a romance or, or are we cheating on people here? Yeah, I, I, I'm feeling like there's some bad things got done. There's something shady, like they're not supposed to be. Because yeah. they have to wait until the night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and first blush, when I first read it, I wasn't even thinking about the title. And, you know, you'll read yourself into a lot of lyrics. And then I was like, so is this about somebody... Uh, that you live with and you're just accepting that they're going away to do what they need to do. That's what I thought of initially. And I don't think that's what it is. But it might be because, um, um, you know, my wife and I have been married 30 years and there's, 30, you know, within 30 years, there will be times when you are paying a lot of attention to each other. <laughs> and there's times when you don't even know what they're watching on TV. Yeah. You know? Um, we're in that weird phase where we're really enjoying each other's company right now. Nice. <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we come around and then it's, it's always funny too. If you've managed to stay in a relationship a long time, you're like, oh, isn't that funny how we were kind of ignoring each other like six or seven years ago? And you're like, that was kind of funny. And why did we have to do that? I was like, I don't know. I guess we just had to. We have eras and chapters. Yep. And what, what makes it work for us is that neither of us are ever mad about it. We're all just like, yeah, I guess that's just kind of what we had to do. Huh. We're just kind of accepting that the other person might be a person. <laughs> that seems like a healthy approach. It's a, I don't know how that happened because neither of us gave try it. that. <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> neither one of us came from healthy. So no, neither of us know how that happened. Yeah, I think maybe that helps in some ways, or I think it certainly, I think it ups your craving for healthiness. Okay, yeah. You, know, I, you didn't have it to take for granted, maybe. I, I could see that, but there was no, there certainly wasn't a roadmap. No. It wasn't like a bunch of cool relationships to look at and go, oh, that one worked pretty good. No, it was a lot of like, okay, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing to not try. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, also don't try that other thing. Oh, that's dangerous. That one. Don't. Definitely don't. All right. Good. You got a good list. Of, it's like uh, making a list of everything you don't need from the grocery store. Right. Then going to the grocery store. Yeah. Let's not. Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> that's a really funny idea. Well, all I got was mayonnaise and ramen. But I but... didn't get these things, and it's just a scroll. <laughs> Gets the ground and rolls away. <laughs> yeah, you know, don't steal this thing and hawk it. Okay, yeah, good. Okay, so I'm, relatives teaching me a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I mean they didn't mean to teach anything. Don't be wanted in Arizona, which is true of my uncle, and not be able to visit. <laughs> a period of time when he couldn't visit. <laughs> oh, amazing. Uh, I will start. Uh, All right. I never ask you where you go after I leave you in the morning. 
Oh, I want to just say too that the lyrics unfold very slowly in this song. Um, very, uh, it's very intentionally. There's, it, it's. He says each line sort of. It takes a while for him to sing it compared to a lot of songs. Do you know what? It's I mean? <laughs> true. He doesn't pack it in. Yeah, so that he you, he really wants you to hear these lyrics because they're prominent. Uh, I never ask you where you go after I leave you in the morning. We go our different ways to separate situations. It's not that easy anymore. I like it's not that easy anymore for sure, because it was easier. It was easier, maybe even easy. Yeah. It definitely feels like an affair. Yeah. They're going their different ways to separate situations. Yeah. Which could be they both have to go to work now, but <laughs> I don't think you'd phrase it that way. Right. <laughs> You'd be, you'd be accused of being very dramatic. Right. Well, now we must go our, our different ways. <laughs> a separate situation. I'm going gonna to go work the register at Trader Joe's. Right. It's fine. <laughs> I'll be back. I'm taking care of the dogs. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. So we do <laughs> this every day. Uh, it's not that easy anymore. Oh, okay. So now if it's an affair, then maybe this is the part where you started to get the feels and oh, yeah. when an affair is becomes really problematic because you're pretty clear you're not actually going to break up with someone else to be with this person right yeah yeah you're kind of putting somebody on notice here yeah so the game part is ending and some and some maybe somebody catches the feels which is terrible when that happens <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's always me, by the way. <laughs> I, I feel like I got that from the crying conversation. <laughs> uh, um, should I go? Yes. I love this. Today I do what must be done, which is very Spanish to me. It, I, it does not sound like him at all. Yeah. To use must. In that way, it's sort of that formal Spanish bravado. Yeah. I do what must be done. <laughs> um, I give my time to total strangers, but now it feels as though the day goes on forever, more than it ever did before. That seems to me like um, thirst. Yeah. It used to be okay leaving you for the daytime. Yeah. Um, but uh, now it seems like these days are getting pretty long. Yeah. I right? want to get back to you. I also want to know what um, I give my time to total strangers. Is that his job? Like I have to go during the day. Is it Trader Joe's customers or is it his family? Yeah. His I, actual family. Yeah. See, I think. I don't think he's talking about Trader Joe's. You never know. But <laughs> yeah, when is like, when did Trader Joe's <laughs> open? <laughs> yeah, you know, he might have been talking about you know the um, the store it was before, but when they still sold bullets. Um, <laughs> little Trader Joe's trivia: it was this huh. company before, and one of the many things they sold was like gunpowder, way back in the day. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That great. Really? Really, a, like a trading post. Yeah, that not as much anymore. We don't sell that as much anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you know what? I tend to think now that the reading I give my time to total strangers is probably like his actual wife, his family. It's that uh, you yeah. know they don't get me the way you get me, baby. Yeah. And uh, there's a tricky thing about uh, a love, and particularly like feelings of romance because feelings of romance can trick you because it feels so good you know the endorphins and stuff and right you start to fool yourself and then the person you've been with forever who you have dinners with and who you pay bills with and they don't necessarily give you an endorphin rush when they're like um so we got to pay the rent <laughs> and <laughs> yeah and you can very selfish, selfishly decide that no, it's a, it's your fault that I don't yeah. feel the way I 
want to feel all the time. Right, which is impossible. Yeah. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a crazy mirage to grasp at. Yeah. And, and yet here he goes. Until the night, until the night, I just might make it. Until the night, until the night, when I see you again, I like, I just might make it. I like that. Make it. A little melodramatic. Yeah. Um, very not like him. The usual uh, cynicism. Yeah. Um, you like, uh, he's in a character, a little bit of a character. And yeah, for sure. And then I'm sure he's had that feeling, that, that drunk kind of love where yeah. you, you just, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a very long day before you can uh, go back. And, you, and your thoughts are constantly on that person and everything else just seems like stupid. Yep, like job him. performance is slipping yeah. or your grades are slipping. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I'll do this one and then you do the next one. Um, okay. Now you're afraid that we that we have changed and I'm afraid we're getting older. Ugh, yucky. <laughs> <laughs> so many broken hearts, so many lonely faces, so many lovers come and gone. I don't know about this lyric because now, because <laughs> because this seems a little like the first couple lyrics were like right in it. Yeah. And then this seems a little distant from it. Low perspective. Yeah. You're, you're afraid that we have changed. I'm afraid we're getting older. So she's afraid that we've changed. He's just like, I just think this is what happens. <laughs> yeah after uh, a lifetime of being uh, sexually uh, on board, off board. Yeah. Leading the relationship, chasing the relationship. Yeah. He's tired. Yeah. This uh, next part <laughs> made me laugh when we listened to it. Yeah. I'll have my fears like every man. You'll have your tears like every woman. Uh, <laughs> I don't know you'd get away with it. <laughs> Today we'll be unsure. Is this what we believe in? And wonder how can we go on? Well, certainly as far as machismo, that feels very Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not consciously, I'd bet. But no. it does, does fit right in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, listening to it, you like, this could almost be a Spanish song translated. Yeah. Um, and that would not raise an eyebrow. Um, but I do like that it's like, we're unsure, is this what we believe in? How can we go on? Can we keep doing this affair? It just feels like daylight thoughts. Yeah about the affair they're having. Yeah, and then nighttime comes and you're like, yeah, we can do this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now that I'm off work, I, I see the light. Yeah, we can do this at least a couple more times, right? <laughs> right, come on. Uh, until the night, until the night, just might make it until the night, until the night. It's repeated a lot. Yeah. When I see you again. That seems to be the key. <laughs> yeah. During the day when we're apart, I don't know, maybe I'm getting logical. I'm sure you're getting logical, which makes me nervous. Um, let's get, come on, nighttime. Yeah. So <laughs> makes cool. it easier. It's kind of cool because the first time until the night is until the night, until the night, I'm desperate. I've got to see you. And then the second one is, well, look, I'm sure when it's nighttime, we'll be good. Yeah, like if you push the chorus up against the verse, he's like, we're unsure, is this what we believe in? We'll wonder how we can go on until the night. Yeah. <laughs> then we won't wonder anything. Yeah. Uh, we'll do the dirty stuff. No thinking, probably <laughs> not much talking. Yeah. After, um, afterwards, we'll 
try to have the same kind of connection we used to have afterwards because I feel bad. <laughs> right. Yeah. They'll let each other off the hook. <laughs> Even though we're not the, in the position of authority to do that. Um, I do like this part of the actual song where it all sort of goes very quiet. Yeah. And it's, it really ramps up into this. Uh, it does feel like rationalizing your way into going back over there again. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, do you want to do the first, I guess, half of this? <laughs> sure. When the sun goes down and the day is over, when the last of the light has gone, as they pour into the street, I will be getting closer as the cars turn their headlights on. A nice image. Yeah. You know, like exactly what, what the light looks like yeah. when that's happening. Um, you can take it from there. Yeah. While they're closing it down, we're going to, we're going to open it up. I like that. Yeah. Oh my God. That's filthy. I just dawned on me how filthy that is. That's great. <laughs> and I don't think I ever think that about a Billy Joel song, but while they're yeah. closing it down, we're going to open it up, which open it up can mean a lot of things and quite a number of them are filthy. <laughs> uh, uh, I hadn't thought of that, but I, yeah. I definitely see where you're going. And it it follows, and while they're going to sleep, we'll just be starting to touch. That's great. That it, you dirty, dirty little man. <laughs> <laughs> you imp. I, yeah, I'm just beginning to feel. I'm just beginning to give. I'm just beginning to feel. I'm just beginning. I'm just beginning to live. I don't know if I love that. Um, yeah. I don't hate it. Yeah. I like the repetitive structure. Yes. It's just, it's just you know, not it, super interesting lyrics. <laughs> it also feels like uh, every other lyric had felt sort of like, especially the just prior we were doing being a little filthy. I'm just beginning to live feels so melodramatic. Yeah that it feels like a lot of songs I've heard where I hear that lyric and I go, ah, this song's not for me. <laughs> yeah. It's over the top. Like you were saying, like 40% of the songs work that are sad. This is the other ones. Yeah. This is the eye roll. Yeah. This is the one where you're like, wow, you really went over the top. Yeah. I don't think even in person that would work very often. No. I'm just beginning to live. I'm just beginning to live, Sue. <laughs> Nothing. She laughed. She laughed at me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. See, that's where this song will make you cry because you'll remember the time Sue laughed at you. <laughs> well, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just beginning to live. Before I leave you again, I like. Yeah. Before the light of the dawn, before this evening can end, I have been waiting so long. Yeah, that's the sentence fragment. Yeah. <laughs> it gets a little um, Romeo and Juliet there, right? Before yeah, the... that's sort of as the orchestral part of the song is ramping up. Yeah. And then right after that is the giant long sax solo, yeah. that... which is almost like the camera panning away from the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, look at this saxophone player. Yeah. You, you know what that means. Yeah. People are getting all naked. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing it. Yeah. It's actually not that pretty to look at. You imagine it. Yeah. There, there's a bit I do sometimes in stand-up where I it's a it's a true story about having sex. And it just happens to be a funny story. But I always beginning with this is a story about me having sex, and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But while I'm telling the joke, imagine I'm talking about somebody other than myself that you would enjoy looking at. And that's part of the bit. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> also, nobody looks good. Yeah. Well, the, and the couple people that- <laughs> When you're having sex. 
and the couple people that do we resent. Yeah. How dare Same you? Kind of thing. I mean, no. Even in movies, when they look good, you are thinking, oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> it wouldn't go in if you were up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, that looks great, but that's uh, that doesn't work. But that means your vagina is in the wrong place or something wrong. Yeah, it'd have to be like right under your belly button, but it's like up and under. So that's I think a lot of us were surprised, yeah. So, in yeah. The early days, like that's oh, a lot further back than I thought, huh? Fucking lootly, that was a surprise, hey. yes, <laughs> yeah. The, you know all the comedy you'd heard and yeah all the scrambled showtime the whole oh, movie it's gonna be right there in the front mine's in the front <laughs> the rest of the movie after the sex scene should be about him trying to understand why what happened is you you're you're born that way but that's i'm just telling you that's different than most people and they're trying to figure <laughs> out she and she's been like Oh, was I adopted? And then it's an interesting movie because she's from a different species that's closely related. <laughs> and she's spending the rest of the movie trying to see somebody else's vagina. <laughs> Am I a freak here? She's like joining gyms. <laughs> Should we write that romantic comedy? Let's think. No. <laughs> <laughs> We should write the pitch. Oh, it's such a funny idea. You get to that point and everything's the same as before, but it's then him realizing, wait a minute. I mean, this is great, but it sh shouldn't work this way. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There's a lot of movies where also where they're, they're not close enough is the other part. Yeah. Yeah, you really, yeah, you can't. If I can see the whole front of you. Yeah. You're not in. Yeah. You're not an elephant. No. Yeah. Then that's Otherwise, another. Otherwise, that's what the scene would be about. Yeah. <laughs> They're going, holy Jesus. Yeah. How are you doing that? And then that guy meets the other girl from the other script. <laughs> the guy who's got the distended penis. I think that's what that would be. Okay. And then he meets her. They're not a match either, by the way. I can't see that that would work, but they meet. That's just part of the plot. I don't think it works out. I think that part works out, but they, they don't get along. <laughs> They're like buddy cops. Like, oh, only our genitals work together. <laughs> we can't stand each other. Oh, no. And in the end, he teaches her to appreciate Christmas. So then it appeals <laughs> to everybody. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> we did it. We fixed it. This is a good little song. The saxophone solo is long. Yep. Uh, and it and again, since I say it all the time, it's a nice song that closes itself off. It's done. Oh yeah, it does end. And you don't think it's going to halfway through that sax solo. You're like, oh, this is a radio fade out. Yeah. Then it ends and he sings a little bit more about until the night, until the night. Yeah. He just won't make it. And then you remind yourself, oh, there's no way in hell he expected this to play on the radio. This has an ending. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't even think that AM radio would play this. They'd be, no, they, nobody's playing this. I don't think he plays it in concerts. Do any of you kids listening remember AM radio? I'm curious. No. FM? How about FM? <laughs> <laughs> Not ground based, earth based radio. And how wildly different AM was. And now AM still exists, but it's just um, oh, the yeah. of men yelling. Yeah, it's like uh, Christian stuff yeah. and uh, white supremacist stuff. And wait, what's the difference again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you like this song. I, I do too. It's very pretty. I, it's one of those that slips out of your rotation and you forget about it. Like, oh, oh, yeah. I uh, wasn't sure what you were talking about when you told me about the song. I was <laughs> like, all right, okay. Because, and again, Spotify, any of those things that you just put on that play for you, is never going to put this one on. 
which I think I should write to Spotify. They should fix that. Seriously, as long as you own everything in the world. See, what I think Spotify tries to do is they curate what they think you want to listen to of your Billy Joel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Instead of just saying, well, he picked Billy Joel. We'll just play anything. Thank you. He has a skip button right on his steering wheel. Very easy. Yeah. So is Spotify, do they do the thing where you're like, I like Billy Joel? And they go, okay, here's two Billy Joel songs and a Bruce Springsteen. Because that's yeah. close. Yes, they that's do. The same, right? Yeah. That's so you can do two Elton things. Elton John for you. Yeah. <laughs> different. Yeah, they're crazily different. Um, it's got 12 albums. You don't have to fucking throw me uh, fucking uh, Yellow Brick Road. Which is a fine song, but I'd have picked it if I wanted it. Right? Because you have infinity number of channels. Yep. So that's if you're on Spotify, you have two ways you can listen to your Billy Joel. Well, many ways. But if you're just picking a playlist that they generate, there's this is Billy Joel. And then they'll only play Billy Joel. And then they've got Billy Joel Radio. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. 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 Boom. Uh, this is Billy Joel is a problem anyway, because this is Billy Joel will go, you know, we'll play my life, uh, New York state of mind. And then uh, I think it'll play my life again. And you go, Hey, <laughs> so you have to make a little effort if you want to actually yeah. hear some more. Yeah. It is a little silly that they go, Oh, this is a real Billy Joel fan. I know what he wants to hear the hits. Yeah, <laughs> that everyone knows, and he's heard way too many times. Yeah, the things he's heard absolutely the fucking most. He would love to hear Piano Man right about now. <laughs> this hardcore fan. <laughs> I, I'm a big, I'm a big Billy Joel head. Uh, have you guys heard of this uh, Piano Man? You, it's uh, one of the older ones. Yeah, you might not be. Most people like his new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm cool like that. A little bit of trivia when he uh, on piano man, uh, it's he's actually playing the piano. Oh, yeah. Um, when you go to a concert, you have seen him, right? Have you never seen Billy Joel? No, uh, I've well, seen when it's of his on the screen, you can see his body, fucking his soul leave his body when he puts on the little uh harmonica thing to play piano man. <laughs> Well, here you fucking idiots go. <laughs> He's like, I'm in the chopper already, but my body can play the song without me. <laughs> and you idiots can sway back and forth and hold up your phones because you don't have lighters anymore. That's, uh, so I, uh, I've seen many concerts of Billy Joel's always at home on my TV because there's a lot of good concert footage you can watch. That's I've true. seen I've seen Barbara Streisand live two more times than I would have wanted to, but <laughs> that's yeah. that's how it is. Now I mean, when, that happened. Now this is how different Barbara Streisand is from Billy Joel. I th and I do think this is very telling. When she does people, she's all into you hearing her sing. Uh, okay. She is ready for you to hear the hits or the hit. <laughs> Great. I mean, great if you can pull it off. I don't blame Billy Joel because I feel the same way when it's piano man time. I was like, all right, here's four minutes for everybody else. When uh, you go see the Bare Naked Ladies, how many times have you seen the Bare Naked Ladies in concert? Uh, no times. No times. Okay. I've seen them a few more times than you, probably uh, 10. Because uh, my buddy Tom loves uh, the Bare Naked Ladies and I love my friend Tom. So uh, I ended up getting into the band. They are a great band. Um, um, and uh, he's he likes a lot of different kinds of music. And yeah, music is a thing you can bond over. But uh, One Week is their song that uh, they got to play every concert. And oh, yeah, yeah. They seem to still enjoy it. But every now and then, they do a thing that I don't think Billy Joel could do with Piano Man, which is they made a different version of it. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty locked in on that thing. If there was a way to do a fast version, but people would be furious. I would be so happy. 
<laughs> if he played like a fucking hard rocking version of it. Yeah. <laughs> or if he just didn't play it and yeah. then yelled at them for chanting it. <laughs> Which is something I could see happening. Oh, a, a hard rocking version would be great, though. It'd be great. The crazy guitar solo. Yeah. So the, what the bare naked ladies do, you know the song one week because everybody knows that. Song. Yeah, Dan. Yeah, that's that song. They do a bluegrass version of it, right? Which is fantastic, and it saves them from being angry, which is what they've said. They more or less said they're like, well, "This makes it tolerable. We can do this version sometimes." Right. And their fans, bare naked ladies fans, are kind of the greatest fans. If you're an artist, you want bare naked ladies style fans. Whatever they do, they're fine with. Great. Yeah. And it's not Billy Joel fans. They want you to play piano, man. <laughs> yep. They really do. They want the hits and the like obscure song that they know. Yeah. <laughs> not an actual obscure song. <laughs> right. But Summer Highland Falls. Now, do you ever feel like listening to Piano Man? Does it ever occur to you that you'd enjoy listening to it? Or does it ever come on and you go, at this exact moment, for some reason, I like it. I feel like, or not that you like it. Of course you like it. But I feel like actually spending the time with this song. No. I, it's been burned into my retina so hard. Like, there's no way to get enough distance from it. Yeah. Because even if you, I live in New York. So, like, even if you don't listen to it and you don't go to any concerts, You'll go into a pizza place one day and it'll be there. I have a deli that I go to at least once a day <laughs> for something or other. And I'd say 30% of the time it's Billy Joel because they have like the New York radio and they have three artists on rotation. Right. It's uh, Sam Springsteen and who else? And like, I oh, will be like Eddie Money or, <laughs> you know. Maybe Frank if you're lucky. Maybe Frank if the old guy's working. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can't escape it. There's no way to be like, oh, it's been 10 years since I heard Piano Man. <laughs> nope. And it's the worst thing is that like when a song title becomes the fucking artist's nickname. Yeah. He's doomed. Yeah. But you're the Piano Man. Yeah. What about Elton John? Can't he be that? He's the Rocket Man. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah, you kind of have to play that effing song because of that. Yeah. Here's what he does in the remake. Keep the beginning the same. Ding, 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 ding. So everybody's like, oh, here it comes. And yeah. then he just stops playing and it's hard guitars and there's no more piano in it. And he yeah. just gets up and he sings it with the mic stand. <laughs> and it's kind of screamy. Yeah. I would love it. I Hey, I bet you if we could find a way to tell him that he should do that, he might actually do it just out of spite. I, Bruno Mars, you are listening. Yeah, You are, probably will run into him at some music industry event. <laughs> I feel like it, he would take it well coming from Bruno Mars. Yeah, yeah. We don't even need a piece of the idea, Bruno. Oh, yeah. No, you can claim it was your idea. Whatever you want to do, you had a dream where he played it that way and just tell him your crazy dream. And if he, he might be the guy who doesn't mind you, you describing a dream, <laughs> probably not, yeah. but take your shot. There was a brief period of time in stand-up where there were multiple comics who had some dumb bit about a dream they had. And it made a lot of us other comics furious because the jokes were never that good. And I'm like, but also, it's a joke about something that didn't happen. Yeah. Why are you talking about a thing that... I I only have... I have one interesting dream story, and that is once I dreamed, I ate a sandwich. And when I got up, I thought, why did my subconscious... Does my subconscious think I can't get a sandwich? <laughs> it was problem solving it for you. Yeah. So that's what a sandwich would be like, Jim. I'm like, okay, I'm even really in the mood for a sandwich, but my subconscious just, anyway. 
So that's a dream I had, if you want to analyze that. I used to have a lot of those flying dreams, but I could only get like six inches off the ground and it was very <laughs> unreliable. I have had those. It was like sort of skipping along the surface of the earth. Yeah. I was like, this is no good. Yeah, I had those and then they eventually morphed into jumping pretty far dreams. <laughs> My dream right now is to walk comfortably. <laughs> um, we'll see what they can do on Tuesday. Yeah, I, I, you'll be good. You'll be, I'll be good. Yeah, they've gotten so much better. And my buddy is getting a hip replaced. Great. He's young to me to be getting a hip replaced, but I think that's just because he seems young. Because he said, I'm almost 70. I was like, what? Jesus. I, yeah, he looked great. Fantastic. God bless. I have a bit because I have a bit where so the bit goes like this. Uh, you're lucky if you live to be 100. You're really lucky if you live to be 70. was the joke. And because because uh -oh. the last 30 years is stupid. And then after a show one time, he goes, so what? I'm done in two years? And I go, you're almost Jesus. That's how I found out how old he was because he was thinking, <laughs> right. but with an inadvertent insult. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you probably learned a lot that way. Dude, I have inadvertently insulted a lot of people. I probably either made you mad once or twice. <laughs> Who remembers? Yeah. Water under the bridge. Yes. Thankfully, it's a big bridge. Um, I'm looking at your background. Oh, yeah. And I thought I had it. I thought I had it early on. Okay. But your shoulder was covering part of the price of the stamp. Oh. And I thought it said two cents. As in, it's no big sin to stick your two cents in. Oh! From Big Shot! Whoa, that's great. It is not that, but I wish all songs, hey, all roads lead to Big Shot. It's true. Ultimately, yes. But now I think it, uh, you might have, uh, you got a stamp in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's a that's Nevada for sure. That, uh, that envelope is going to stop in Nevada. No? Well, maybe. Um, and anyway, it's a letter with a postmark is Nevada, so it may be a little um, sideways referencing, but it's... Uh... All right, so I don't have the right song. What song did you think it was? Stop in Nevada. Yeah, that's it. Oh, we got it. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what's so dumb? Yeah, me. But I was... <laughs> You were like, so is that letter going to stop in Nevada? And I'm like, well, we got postmarked there. Like, you're just asking me about the letter. I'm like, oh, he's guessing. <laughs> What's the letter about? <laughs> yep, a stop in Nevada. We got it. And I was delighted that the background wasn't too bad. I like the background doesn't wash me out or anything too bad. So that no, was real nice for you. You might keep that one. I, there's, a, there's a couple I'm keeping that we've done because I like them. And uh, there's a couple that I'm like, ooh, there's been clues that I'm not giving you because I'm like, ah, this clue makes me look terrible. <laughs> All right, you got some trivia for me? I do. Uh, aforementioned Richie Kanata, who did the uh, fantastic sax solo from the end of that song and so many others, um, no longer with the band, as are several other band members from that time that era of Billy Joel. A lot of people left the band. Some people were fired. Right. But three of them, formerly four of them, one died, um, have formed their own band that still exists. What is the name of that band? I actually think I know this. It is Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that was very close. Um, Foo Fighters just played in Madison Square Garden. I know, and people are pissed because you had to have a vaccine. Shut up. Shut up. Get the vaccine or stay home. Yeah. Dummies. Um, the band is called Lords of 52nd Street. Rad. Because they, many of them met while making that album. And um, some producer referred to them by that name while they were making that album. <laughs> The Lords of and, uh, as they left Billy Joel's band, they're like, oh, we should just be our own thing. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Have they, I'm sure they tour, have they, 
they haven't charted with anything. Have they released an album? I think it's more like available for bar mitzvahs on Long Island. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the vibe I get. Because they're all 70 right. plus, which means their lives are over. Yeah. According to you. <laughs> That's right. I, uh, I'm honestly thinking because of my friend of changing it to 80. Just to be, just so my friend can hear the joke and go, oh, 80, sure. <laughs> That's some leeway. <laughs> I think you should. That's a mitzvah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. I've been, that joke is fairly new and I like the idea of performing it at casinos just because I know there's going to be a ton of 70 year olds there who's like, hey. <laughs> Yeah, 80 might not make a difference to most of the audience. Yeah, that's true. Worth there'll be, and there'll be at least one person who'll go, hey, you were really funny, but listen, man. Listen, man, I'm 86 and I still got it. And you're like, uh, the, the, it is dementia, right? <laughs> uh, well, right, here's who are you and why did I start talking to you? Uh, here's what I picked. I want to know what song you picked. Sometimes a fantasy. Wow. Nice. Yeah, a good tune. Good tune. Nice uh, parenthetical phrase. Kind of like tonight's title was. Yeah. Are you using that correctly? Parenthetical phrase. Probably. Sometimes tonight, sometimes a fantasy. Yeah. They're not sentences. And I was uh, originally yeah. going to pick stiletto, but I did not. Okay, it's still out there. Yeah, so one of oh, somebody who works on this show can pick it later. <laughs> we'll talk to all the engineers on my end. <laughs> you do the same. Sometimes yeah. a fantasy. Yeah. I have nice memories of that song, I think. Remember all the waiters in your grand cafe? No. That's a different song. Yeah. <laughs> Which we did talk about. Um, all the waiters in your grand cafe leave their tables when you blink. Oh, yeah, that's a different song. That's a different song. Same album. Yeah, that's Don't Ask Me Why. Yeah, there it is. Okay. You. Which <laughs> we talked about, right? We did that one. Didn't yeah, we? we don't have dementia. Yeah, well, well yeah. Yeah, not, yeah. Not at least for 20 years. I think we talked about that song because it was your background one time. Oh, so we haven't actually, okay. We've tackled it. Because I love Don't Ask Me Why. I think that's a great song. It's very Beatles. Yes, hells yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, it's fun as fuck. It's a good song to hear, come on. Yeah, amen. It's a that's good one I don't get tired of. Yeah, yeah, because you can sing it in your car all the time. Yeah, see, you can do it. And nobody calls him, hey, it's the Don't Ask Me Why, man. Nobody says that. It's a question guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a question guy. It's a question guy. All right. Well, that was a good episode, uh, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'll vouch for that. That's episode the whole thing. Episode 30. Next week we're going to be talking about sometimes a fantasy, and we'll see you then. <laughs>